Oh, happy Monday. It's just going to go 11.40 in a couple of seconds. This is To The Point with me, Patrick Christie's and Mercy Timuroki on GB News. We're live on your TV, radio and online this morning. Yes, now uh, something we were speaking about a bit earlier, Harry Potter author J.K. Rowling has criticised a new amendment to the Scottish uh, Recognition Act. Uh, if the am amendment is passed, it will drop the need for those wishing to change gender to one, get a medical diagnosis of gender dysphoria, two, it will reduce the legal transition age from 18 to 16, and finally, it would reduce the time a person has to live as their new gender before they can legally transition from two years to six months. Yes, indeed. Well, Miss Rowling tweeted, the law Nicola Sturgeon is trying to pass in Scotland will harm the most vulnerable women in society, those seeking help after male violence such as rape and incarcerated women. Statistics show that imprisoned women are already far more likely to have been previously abused. Yes, while the Harry Potter writer has been vocal about her view that sex, not gender identity, should be the basis of decisions on safeguarding. Well, let's talk to Suzanne Smith, co-director of Women for, uh, for Women Scotland. Apologies. Uh, good morning. Thank you for joining us this morning to discuss what is obviously quite uh, a controversial topic. Uh, what do you make of, of this proposed legislation by the Scottish Government? Um, this is really as bad as we thought it was going to be. Um, there were some very last minute meetings um, with women's groups, um, with the Minister, but um, a lot of concerns that were raised haven't been taken on board at all. Um, and it's also been very clear that there's been a very limited number of people that the minister has listened to. So, for example, on the um, age, um, the Children and Young People's Commissioner actually said that they did not think that age limit should be dropped. But they disregarded that. They didn't consult um, with anybody. We have FOIs that show they didn't consult with anybody outside this very small group government-funded organisations, Stonewall, LGBTGU, um, um, Equality Network, etc. Um, and we, they were asked about, you know, had they talked to mental health professionals, people working with vulnerable children, and they haven't. Okay. okay. Have you got case studies, presumably you must do, that prove that there are people there who live to regret the decision that they've made, maybe at a very young age, and maybe due to something other than simple gender dysphoria or something like that, where actually they wanted to change the transition back. Because I'm very concerned, as I'm sure many people watching this now, and you yourself must be, that we're going to end up with a pandemic of 16-year-olds transitioning into a different gender, regretting it, and actually suffering more depression and more uh, issues going forward as a result of that decision and how easy it was made for them to do that. Absolutely. Um, we've seen a 4,000% increase in the number of girls in particular going, being referred to the gender identity services. And most of these children did not have um, gender identity issues as very young children. It, it's been given this name rapid onset gender dysphoria, and it's a comparatively new phenomenon. There seems to be quite a lot of social contagion with um, girls in Greeks um, or deciding suddenly to change their, their gender. There's been um, evidence from whistleblowers at the Tavistock saying that many of these children have comorbidities, there's high incidence of depression, also of autism. Um, they tend to be same-sex attracted children. And so there's a lot of homophobia, externalised or internalised. And we know now that some of those young people, as you say, are coming through. There are people like Kira Bell and our engineer Watson. They come through and they've had, in some cases, operations to confirm their identity and taking testosterone, etc., and are now okay. deeply regretting it. And the problem with this bill, which Sinead raised with the minister and I believe LGB Alliance raised with the minister, is that there is no way back. And that people who change their minds could potentially be criminalised. So you could have a confused 16-year-old changing their legal sex and then in their 20s realising, as many are now doing, that it was a terrible mistake. And there is no way back for them under this legislation. Yeah. There's a lot of clamour for a lot of things. There's a lot of clamour for Scottish independence. They may well get a referendum on that soon. There's lots of clamour to stop this national insurance hike, for example. We're going to have a spring statement on that particular issue. There's a lot of clamour for a lot of things. Is there a massive clamour in Scotland 
for this bill to be passed? Or is Nicola Sturgeon just crowbarring this in? And if she is, why? No, there really isn't. And the latest BBC poll, which keeps being thrown at people saying, oh, the, uh, there's a general view that this should be made easier. There isn't. What that BBC poll showed was that most people don't have a clue about that. But this isn't on the radar for most people. What's been on the radar is recovery after COVID. It's the impact of COVID on mental health and the economy and so on. That there's a, a terrible situation in Scottish education at the moment. Apologies, my machine's making a noise. Um, and, and we've got the highest drug deaths in Europe. There are so many things happening in Scotland that are not being addressed. But this seems to be the issue on which Nicola Sturgeon is determined to stake her legacy. Exactly. And it's, it's very peculiar. And it's not, okay. it's not something that's in the interest of anybody in Scotland. No. OK, well, Susan Smith, look, thank you so much for joining us. Obviously, very controversial topic, but uh, your, your views are very welcome here and yeah. uh, thanks for, the, uh, for your insight. Um, do, you not, do you not think if you're Nicola Sturgeon, right, you want your legacy to be the way that your, you rec your country recovered from COVID? You want your legacy, right, to be stopping the attainment gap, which is shocking, by the way, in Scottish it's, schools, it's right? You want your legacy to be trying Drugs, to help they ha the drug have problem. The exactly. Drug problem. That's a legacy. When all is said and done, and, you know, hopefully there isn't a statue to Nicola Sturgeon, if that's one thing I, one, I wouldn't mind telling down anyway, uh, if there is a statue to her, you'd think, what would it be for? Mm. Are people really going to go, gosh, you know what, I'll tell you what, that Nicola, she never quite achieved independence. She didn't sort out our drug issues. Our children are really poorly educated. Our NHS is knackered, but oh, oh, it's well easy to change your gender now. Well, we do have somebody who has one theory. One of cool. our uh, viewers or listeners has a theory about why Nicola Sturgeon is doing this. Um, she says, uh, he, sorry, Paddy, uh, I think you might be missing the point. Oh. The SNP are introducing this uh, in order to look woke and cool to the younger Scottish demographic. It's all about votes. They would allow sheep to choose their gender if they could vote, which, to be fair, all politicians would. But that's true, isn't it? Because they allowed 16-year-olds, didn't they, to vote in yeah. that Scottish referendum. They, they know, you know, if, if, if they move towards this, what uh, Paddy called the woke uh, le legislation, woke um, agenda, mm. then they'll draw in those younger votes. And it's maybe that's all part of the plan, to, to look like a modern party which appeals to, to the younger generation. Yeah, I just, I just think, you know, at the end of the day, I, I get that, I get all of that. But I, I just think it's, it's a sorry state of affairs, isn't it? If, a, if an entire generation is more inclined to vote for somebody because they managed to make it easier for people to change their gender, despite the fact that they've got an appalling record when it mm. comes to the actual key services of your country. If that's the main issue for people going forward, then I think we are back yeah. in trouble. Uh, yeah, and this legislation, uh, very finally, before we move on, uh, th th it's making... So, essentially, at this point, you have to show, give evidence you've lived as the gender you've chosen. So, if I was transitioning to a man, I'd have to give evidence to show that What's I've that been mean? living... You joined a rugby club. Uh, I don't you know. Joined I, a rugby club, I don't know what kind of evidence night. it... But it, it, you'd have to do two years. This legislation is changing it to six months, but it includes... Three, three months of that is, OK, show evidence that for three months. And three months is a reflection period, is what they're calling it. Mm. So, essentially, in the bill is this three-month reflection period uh, to, to decide whether if you're 16 17 that you want to ch become a man or a woman legally and change your gender permanently i mean yeah. three months for, for such a decision but that's insane isn't, I think. There, isn't there hypocrisy almost palpable with this so so you know there's no such thing as gender we're all fluid we're all one but if you want to become a boy you have to live as a boy well, what does that mean hmm. you have to be a stereotypical boy do you yeah. know, do, are there genders or not people do confuse i, I think we should just accept if you're a tomboy, it doesn't necessarily mean no. transgender. And that's kind of what they're peddling. They're saying, well, if, you, if you're if you a girl and you like playing football and all this kind of thing, oh, you maybe have you considered you might be transgender? I bet you that's what some yeah. people in, in schools are telling kids that, oh, maybe you're, you're trans. Well, you know, let us know what well, you think. But uh, yet again, I'm, 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 I am okay. convinced, right, that if you strapped all these politicians down to a lie detector and made them sit it, that they would not believe that this law is actually the best thing to do. I'm convinced of it. I'm sure I, I feel the same way about Sadiq Khan as well down here in London. But anyway, moving on. Let's take you through.